This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup, with Miguel playing his newly made Yurlock deck. He keeps a Hunter's Insight, Elvish Mystic, Mountain, Dictative Karametra, Diabolic Tutor, Foreboding Ruins, and a Smoldering Marsh. Max is playing a Rumi of the Dead Tide, keeping two islands, Sunken Hollow, Toxic Deluge, Callous Blood Mage, Nefalia Drownyard, and Command the Dreadhorde. Olivier is playing Aminatu, keeping Commander Sphere, Watery Grave, Sensei's Divining Top, Teferi Temporal Archmage, Devastation Tide, Port Town, and a Mortuary Mire. Alex is back with Sir Gwyn, keeping a Nomad Outpost, Two Planes, Radiant Destiny, Silverwing Squadron, Foulmire Knight, and an Order of Yogmoth. Miguel wins a die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a Tap Smoldering Marsh. Max just plays a Tap Sunken Hollow. Olivier flexes on the table, playing an untapped Port Town and revealing a Watery Grave from his hand. He taps it for a top and passes to Alex. Alex plays a Nomad Outpost, which comes untapped, passing. Miguel plays a Foreboding Ruins, revealing a Mountain, and then casts a Warlock class. Max just plays an Island. Olivier drops a tapped Mortuary Mire and passes turn. Alex plays a Plains and taps two for a Mind Stone. Miguel plays the Mountain he'd revealed earlier and then levels up the Warlock class. He keeps one of his top three and bins the rest. Max plays a Frexian Tower for turn, and three mana gets him a Callous Blood Mage. It enters, and he loses one and draws one from the mode. Olivier plays a Command Tower for his land, and three mana gets him a Commander Sphere. Alex plays a Plains and pays three mana for Profane Insight, putting the Foulmire Knight into exile on an adventure to maybe cast later. This has him losing one and drawing a card. Miguel draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Diabolic Tutor, going to find a card to put to hand, and passes. Max has a Nefalia Drownyard as his land return, and then taps enough to bring his commander out, a room of the Dead Tide. Olivier taps a black in his main phase to activate a Sensei's Divining Top. He then plays a Demir Aqueduct, bouncing the Mire back to hand, and passing. Alex has a land drop for turn, and then casts a Foulmire Knight half of his card. He taps the rest of his mana for Heartseeker and passes to Miguel. Miguel has a forest for turn and taps two for Sakur Tribe Elder. He then taps one red for Vandal Blast and blows up the Heartseeker. Max plays a Swamp and then uses the tower to sacrifice the Blood Mage, making two black mana. He uses that plus a blue to activate the Drown Yard and mills himself for three. He whiffs on creatures, unfortunately, and passes turn. Olivier plays a tap watery grave and just passes. Alex has a planes for turn and drops the always threatening Sunforger. He gears it up onto the Foulmire Knight and goes at Miguel. Miguel blocks with the Sakura Tribe Elder and sacrifices it before damage to go and find a basic forest. Miguel plays a Shadow Blood Ridge as his land for turn and taps enough to cast a Black Dragon. It enters, and Miguel has the Enter the Battlefield trigger go on the Foulmire Knight to give it minus 3 minus 3, which takes it out. Max plays an Island for turn and activates a Rumi. He exiles 3 cards from his graveyard and then pays the Encore cost, which is the normal cost, of a Callous Blood Mage. This makes him three tokens of it, and he has each picked the mode of losing a life and drawing a card, losing a total of three and drawing three. He then swings one apiece at each opponent, 
and Olivier and Alex take their hits while Miguel blocks with his dragon. Max then sacrifices one of the tokens to the tower for two black and uses a blue to help activate the drown yard again, milling three more and passing. At the end of Max's turn, Olivier activates his sphere to pay for the cost of the top and rearranges his top three. He then draws her turn and plays a Temple of the False God. He taps enough for Thalia's Lancers and goes to find a legendary card to put to hand. He reveals an Oath of Teferi and then passes while shuffling. Alex draws her turn and activates his Mind Stone to sacrifice it and draw another card. He then plays out a Bloodforged Battle Axe and passes. Miguel plays a land for turn and taps enough for a Zerta Ancient. He now has double the mana from his lands and uses some of it to cast Yurlock and passes. Max plays a Morphic Pool for turn and taps only three lands to cast Kaiga. He then activates the tower to sacrifice it for two black mana, and the on death trigger lets him steal Miguel's black dragon. Max then activates a Rumi, exiling three cards from his graveyard, and paying six mana to encore cast the legendary dragon again, and makes three token copies of it. He has to resolve the legendary rule immediately, sacrificing two of them. This lets him steal the Zerta Ancient and Thalia's Lancers. Once that's done, he cycles an Ash Barons, going to find a swamp, and goes to combat. He hits Olivier with the Kaiga token, and then passes, sacrificing the token at the end of turn and stealing Yurlock. Olivier at the end of turn once more uses his top to rearrange his top three. He then draws for turn and plays a Bajuka Bog, exiling Max's graveyard, and then taps a lot of mana for an Oath of Teferi. It comes in and exiles his Bajuka Bog to return at the end of turn. Olivier then taps enough for Aminatu and upticks her. With the ability on the stack, Alex pays to cast D-Spark on the Oath to prevent all the extra loyalty activations. Olivier responds by using Teferi's protection and phases out. He still resolves the ability and then passes his turn. This has Bajuka Bog returning to the field we think, as the only permanent on his side of the field that can be targeted right now. He also exiles Alex's graveyard with the ETB trigger. Alex plays a mountain and finally brings out Sir Gwyn. He gears her up with a Sunforger and then the Battle Axe and passes to Miguel. Miguel has a mountain for turn as well and casts an Elvish Mystic. He then levels up the Warlock class and once that's done, drops Dictate of Karametra because why not and passes turn. Max untaps and plays an island in his main phase. His lands now tap for three each, which seems a bit excessive, and he makes six mana from two lands using three of it to activate the Drown Yard to mill three cards. He has to use the mana before changing phases or he'll take damage, and he has the three mana go towards a Plague Crafter. It enters, and everyone sacrifices a creature, with Olivier having to discard a card. Max then activates a Rumi, exiling three cards from his graveyard, and paying for the Encore to cast a Plague Crafter. This has him making three copies, and each opponent has to discard three cards while Max sacrifices his tokens to the triggers. Moving to combat, the Ancient and Lancer go at Alex, while Gurlock and the Dragon go at Miguel. With nothing else, Max passes. Olivier phases back in on his turn and draws. He taps the Bog for three black mana and the Temple of the False God to help cast Bolas' Citadel, but still has some floating colorless left. He then activates his top with the colorless to rearrange his top three. More mana is then tapped to cast a Peregrine Drake, which leaves Olivier with some floating mana, and he untaps five lands. Six mana then goes into casting Mordecane, who I'd never seen before, and he upticks the walker. He then activates the top to put it on top and draw a card, and then casts it off the top of his library with the Citadel, losing one life. He's able to do this over and over again, drawing a card each time and losing one life. He stops once he hits a Wish Cost Talisman, which he then casts for two mana, and activates it. He gives the artifact to Alex, 
and then tutors for a card, which he kindly reveals to be a spark double. He then casts Call the Gatewatch to put to hand Sora and Grim Nemesis, and between the spark double being a copy of Aminatu, he can keep blinking each version out to reset it, and gets two loyalty activations per blink. Long story short, he'd be able to blink them back and forth over and over again, not to mention using Soren's first ability to drain out the table until everyone's dead. Game review time. So this was another lowered power game, although it did end in a combo, but let's face it, that was like six cards plus a ton of mana necessary, so he wouldn't have gotten there very quickly. I am perpetually impressed by Max with how well he builds his decks and how well he plays them, because that Arumi deck was spice. I love the Kaiga play, I love the fact that he stole a bunch of creatures, I thought it was so, so cool. If anything, it makes me want to build my Garuda deck into it, because it's such an inspiration. Miguel seems to be in a comfort zone when it comes to anything with green and red, although Yurlock seemed to be a bit outside of his wheelhouse. I like the fact that he ran a lot of doublers since it would punish people with Yurlock being out, but unfortunately by the time that he had him, I don't think that was going to happen since people were using their mana very efficiently. That's unfortunately always the risk when you're playing Yurlock, and without something like City of Solitude to lock people up from casting spells, it's kind of hard to keep them from getting crazy amounts of value. It seemed like Alex unfortunately was a bit mana starved this game since he really was only able to get a few equipment out and those pieces were eventually destroyed. By the time he was able to get Sir Gwyn out, it was a little bit too late. Olivier's Aminatu deck was super sweet, and yes he did move the combo which is kind of uninspiring considering how fast the game was, but it did require like 18 pieces and a zillion mana, which if Miguel hadn't played the doublers, he probably wouldn't have obtained. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.